Getting Pregnant Before Marriage My name is Olusegun Mokuolu. There are times and in some culture and some areas or even some individuals who will insist that the lady must get pregnant before she can be married, before the marriage or the wedding can go ahead. I want to say to any Christian sister who is listening to this, anybody who tells you that you must get pregnant before marriage is from the pit of hell. Such a man is an agent of Satan. Such family, they are from the pit of hell. Have nothing to do with a man like that. Many who have taken that step are in sorrow are in pain now. Some may not tell you. It may look as if things is going on fine for them on the outside, but that is not the case. Never become so desperate to violate God. A man that has his breath in his nursery, what will he offer you? He can't even guarantee you tomorrow. The first thing is that that man has no problem with fornication. That man has no problem with sin. The Bible says flee fornication. He said every sin is without the body. But sin of fornication is a sin against your own body. He says your body is the temple of God. And that day that defies the temple of God, God will destroy. Such a person is setting you against God. Why will you marry a man that has no regard for God? A man that has no regard for God will have no regard for you. Just take it that, that way. Everything may seem good now, you will eventually cry and regret it in marriage. You will be crying every day. You will sorrow in marriage. Therefore, take heed now. Don't be under pressure. Don't be under any kind of pressure. I have even had married men who are struggling to have babies in their own marriage. And they are telling some young women, can you just be having babies for me? And do you know that foolishly some women are doing this only to realize that they've put themselves in eternal problem? Because there are many things you cannot factor in. Number one, you are fornicating. He is committing adultery. Do you think that you, you can destroy one marriage and then your own life will go smoothly? A man is telling you and say, just be having babies for me. Is that what you want to do with your life? That a man will just sleep with you and you will get pregnant and secretly you will be nursing his, his baby and that is what you think your own life is meant for. That is all the value you attach to your own life and you will give such nonsense a consideration. This is something I have had people consider and get involved to even do. Some are doing it. Never, never consider such offer. That shows that you don't know your worth. That shows you don't know your creator. You didn't come to this world to come and get married. You didn't come into this world to come and have babies. You came into this world to serve God. And as long as you are serving God, your life is complete in Christ. You are okay with God. How can a man tell you that you must get pregnant before he, he marries you? That's a wicked man. There is the other side of women also who are doing everything to get pregnant because they think that is the way they can secure the man. A man that God cannot secure for you, pregnancy will not secure him for you. You are wasting your time. You are wasting your life for you to be thinking that when you get pregnant for him, then he's going to marry you. I'm telling you that is the beginning of your sorrow. He will maltreat you. You will cry in marriage. You will spend nights crying because you are making a very foolish decision. You cannot hold a man with pregnancy. A man that wants to marry you will come out and marry you. A man that is telling you that, see, I'm not interested in having baby for now. And you are doing everything to have baby for him. You are not only fornicating, you are also, you are also, you know, hurting your own very life. You are putting your own life in, in such a precarious situation. I know of a sister that they told that she must get pregnant before they could do wedding. And she did. And six, seven months along the line, the pregnancy came down. But they had done the wedding. Now, in marriage, she took in again, and then the pregnancy came down. 
and I think the third the third pregnancy also came down. I don't know whether this sister has a baby now. There are many things you can you you can't factor. You don't just know tomorrow. Don't play God with your life. There are many things you don't understand. If you get pregnant and the man dies tomorrow, what happens to you? What happens? I remember a young lady that the brother was saying to her, there is no problem. When you get pregnant, I will take care. I will be happy. Then she got pregnant at 21 years of, of age or thereabout. And somebody called the brother and said, see, what's wrong with you? Is this how you want to start your life? No, 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 no. Deny the pregnancy and go and, go and complete your education and start a life with a responsible young lady. And that man took that advice. When the lady was telling me this story, she was crying. Very brilliant, she had to quit school. Her parents were looking up to her to grow up and become somebody in life. But she's starting her life at the age of 21 as a single mother. Unnecessary single mother. So why will you look at Proverbs chapter 1 verse 10? It says, my son, if sinners entice thee, consider thou not. They may suggest it to you, but never agree to it. In fact, as a sister, once a brother or any man says to you that you must get pregnant before you will, before he will marry you, just know that that man is a no-go area. If a man that is ready to have sex with you before marriage, you should not consider such a man. You know, people take all these things for granted. And then they enter into marriage and then they start crying. And are, this example abounds. How, how will you continue? You know, one thing about my life is every day I cancel married people and I cancel single people. When I cancel married people, they are crying. I can see their sorrow, their pain. I wish every single person can understand the pain and the sorrow in a, in a bad marriage. And then on the other side, I'll be talking to young people who are almost bent on entering into a bad marriage. It's like until they enter into it, their eyes won't be open. The Bible says, consent thou none. Don't give your consent. Nobody can put a gun to your head and say, you must marry me or you must get pregnant. Keep your body. You will have enough sex in marriage. In fact, they will be begging you. You will be tired. So what, what are you in a hurry for? That you want to get pregnant. Is your life about getting pregnant? Is your life about getting married? Because you are just desperate to have a man over your life. You want to get pregnant. And if you are a brother, and this is what you have been telling sister, maybe it's, it's from your culture or it's from, it's from your tribe or I don't know where you get this idea from. I want to tell you, it is satanic. It is demonic. It shows that Satan is living right in your life. It's right there in your heart. If this is what you are telling the lady that you want to marry, you are not of God. You are from the devil. You are from Satan. People should have nothing to do with you. You are just out there to destroy people's life. You better repent before it is too late for you. Where did you see it in the Bible? That somebody must get pregnant before they get married. Marriage is not even about, about having a child. Before I married my wife, I told her, if we don't have baby in this marriage, it will not matter. Marriage is a covenant. Whether we have a child or not is another story entirely. I didn't marry to have a child. I got married to serve God. And I can serve God. Nothing will hinder, nothing is hindering me to serve God except I want to hinder myself. So why will you make having a child a condition before you get wedded? And you, my sister, why will you fall into such foolishness? Why will you deliberately subject your life into sorrow? Why will you subject your life into pain? Why? The Bible says, Consent thou not. Proverbs 1 10. If sinners entice thee, if somebody foolish is suggesting that you do something stupid, tell the person no. Let them know that, that you are standing for God. Take a stand for God. You have been crying for marriage. When will you cry for souls to be saved? You are not concerned about the things of God. Stand for God and let God stand for you. Stand for something. Stop compromising your life. Stop living as if you are a dog. Every man that comes to you must sleep with you. Some of you have lost count of men that have slept with you. Even some who are virgins, they are only virgins technically because there is no intercourse, but they've done everything. Is that the kind of life you want to live? 
When are you going to say, Jesus, I'm going to stand for you. I'm going to live for you. That is how people lived in the Bible. There are people that they put a knife to their neck. They said, deny Jesus or else we will slaughter you. And they said they will not deny Jesus. You, it is only sex. They are saying, say no to sex. Or, or say yes to sex or else we will do this to you. And you are saying yes. You are compromising. Ordinary sex. Is it you now that they will put a knife to your throat that you will not compromise? When you are compromising on little matter, matter that are of no consequence, and you are compromising yourself, and you are behaving as if, as if your, your senses have been caged. That's the way you are behaving. Why are you frustrating your own life? Why are you the enemy of your own life? That's why I say, when you are praying and say your enemy should die, and you are fornicating, you don't know that you will be the first person to die. You are your own enemy. Jesus said, love your enemies. So stop praying for anybody to die. Because if that, that prayer is wrong, but even if God is going to answer, you will be the first person to die. Because you are your own enemy. The way you are living your life is what is hindering God from helping you. You cannot live in sin and expect the grace of God to abound. God doesn't work that way. Repent today. Make your life right. See, learn from this. Don't fall into the error that people before you are falling into. Don't fall into that error. Don't make that mistake. Otherwise, you will cry in marriage. I'm not cursing you. I'm telling you what will happen. It is not a prophecy. It is a consequence. To every action, there is a consequence. To every decision, there is a consequence. You can make a decision that you want to live a honorable life. And you can make a decision that you want to live a disgraced life. You want to enter into marriage through the labor world. Or you can go through marriage through the, through the wedding altar. You can choose. I told, a, I told a young lady, are you not happy? Or don't you desire that one day they will send out your wedding invitation card? People will come from afar. You will get dressed. And then you will go forward. Your, 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 your father will lead you. And then a wedding will be conducted in your honor. And you will go home. You will start honeymoon with your husband. I said, don't you desire that kind of life? Why then do you want to go and pack your load and start living with a man that is not your husband? What kind of life is that? For what? Why do you look down on yourself? Why do you think you don't want anything? And then you just want to go and live with a man. Who told you that God doesn't have a great plan for your life? The plan of God is not dependent upon your background. It's not dependent on your parents. It is dependent on the power of God. And God cannot fail you. Stand right for God. And that's why I want to introduce you to a free marriage course. Because you see, the problem is that you don't understand how biblical marriage works. So you have been going it about you have been going about it the worldly way. But you can go about it the biblical way. That is the kingdom marriage. That is the way we get married. That is the way we choose. That is, that is, we understand the purpose of marriage. The principles, the pattern, the process. They are all contained in the word of God. And we have put all this together in a free marriage course. It's completely free from beginning to the end. All you need to do is to send us an email. The email address is BibleLoveHelper at gmail.com. Check the description on this YouTube channel. You will see the email address. You will also find my phone number. If, if the, for any reason you need to contact me, please feel free to contact me. Just write through that email and say that you are single and you are interested in the free marriage course. And we will send you the enrollment form and then you will start. It will teach you. You will understand what marriage is. You will know how God leads people to their spouse. You will learn about the kind of person you should marry. How to conduct yourself in caution. You will be grateful to God for his word and for putting this course together. So just write and start that marriage course. It will guide you. It will help you not to make mistakes. God will not give you what he has not prepared you for. 
So let God prepare your life. There is a time for preparation. There is a time for manifestation. God makes all things beautiful in his own time. If you stand for God, I speak to your life. God will make all things beautiful in your own time. He will make your own time to come. And when that time has come, which will be his own time also, he will make everything beautiful for you. Do not be afraid. Don't be anxious and then go into a wrong marriage. It is better to be happily single than to be sadly married. I pray that God will show you mercy and guide you into the right marriage. In the name of Jesus. My name is Olushegun Mokuolu. Please share this message with other Christian singles who may also be struggling or be having this same challenge. And you may want to consider subscribing to this channel. God bless you.